Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and um, I was working on, on my file browser again because actually that was a really good comment in one of the latest video is um, uh, whether I should add like a quick search or some sort of search functionality and nowadays I realize that I also need this functionality because the number of files that I have on my home folder in my in my server is starting to become quite a lot and uh, um, you know, any new folder that I create now is not going to be, you know, listed on the top, but it's, you know, more like alphabetical order. So I wanted to apply a, a quick filter and uh, which, um, you know, if I would just type something, then it would just uh, filter down the, the records. And because I have all the, all the, you know, all the files in the folder stored in the context, I can do it quite easily. So for example, if I start typing, it starts... Um, you know, narrowing down the, the results that I have. But if I want to, you know, go back to the original list, then, you know, I can just delete and it uh, it refreshes the this uh, U table. And uh, it does it, all, does it automatically, I mean that it, because everything is in the memory, it doesn't need to reread the files again. Not that it would take a long time, but uh, yeah. So if I do CNC, then I can just see these, you know, files and then, I can always go back and then, you know, filter on something else. And it searches in the, um, in the title of the files. Sorry, yeah, on the, in the file name it's, uh, itself. And uh, now I just realized that it actually it is case sensitive. So you have to be aware of that or change something. But again, it's really easy because if you remember what, you know, for example, I created an influx backup uh, folder and uh, so I can just quickly go there, otherwise I think it would be like on page four or five. And then of course, when you change to a folder, then the filter resets because, uh, you know, it's, you wouldn't know if, the, if you would want to apply the same filter. So simple functionality, but um, I think it's a good addition. And I had the space here done below the, um, the main file browser uh, since I added the download all button. So I think it's actually a good, a use of this free space done here and probably I could have a few more features done there. So let's see how it works in the flow. So let's see how this works in the flow. Actually I managed to do this with very few changes to the flow. It's namely I added these two new boxes here and I made changes to this prep data uh, function note here and I think the rest of it is actually unchanged. And then by the way of course if you need this I will go back to the, um, I think I have a link where I uploaded this into GitHub and I will just replace that with, <coughs> and I will just replace the latest version with, you know, the ones which has all these additional features as well. So I have a simple in, inject, well, sorry, a text input node, which uh, it uses the default configuration. So it, um, you know, sends a message out every 300 milliseconds after the changes. So this is why if you start typing, it starts up, uh, updating the view immediately. You don't, you don't have to press enter or move to a different field. And I just uh, disable this to, uh, um, if, you know, message arrives on the input, whether it, that it should pass it through. Because the only message that arrives on the input that for every single folder change, it removes the filter. But uh, it does it in the... Um, the I mean, in the code anyway, so I don't have to pass this information through the code uh, anyway. And I just specified it to be like six by one. And yeah, so the other important thing is that I set the topic to quick filter. So every time I change the filter values, then it sends a message out with the filter in the payload and the topic being quick filter. And uh, yeah, so normally, you know, you change a folder or you refresh or you do anything with the buttons, like, you know, these buttons here. And then it changes the folder, so it reads the files, and this is the, the one which preps the data. So it you know generates the file name without the folder and some of the other small details. And this is where I added <coughs> the, um, the functionality for the quick filter. So normally what it does is uh, <coughs> it does, uh, you know, as, as I said, it's all the formatting of, you know, the files and generating the icons, uh, what I explained in the first video. And then it saves the the results in um, in the context in this current 
folder. So if I go to the context and the flow, then you can see that, I mean, I have all the objects. So it's now only one because I've moved to that folder which only had one file. <coughs> so whenever I make any change, I, I change, change the quick filter, then the message the topic is a quick filter. So this part of the code executes in which it gets the information from here and then it well, it just basically goes through all the files and then it checks if the file name includes any of the filter. And if it doesn't include, so you can see, you can see the exclamation mark here, then I just use message.payload splice uh, i comma one. So it, I just remove that entry. So basically I just remove everything which is not uh, in the, uh, well, it doesn't match the filter. And then I return the rest. So, and then the view gets refreshed with this information, but I don't change whatever is in the in the in the context because I want to make sure that the context has all the files. So if I change the quick filter, then it can just quickly you know filter it again. And in order for make in order for this to work, I had to do one trick because uh, I'm not sure if you have uh, remember in one of my one of my earlier videos I mentioned that. When you do like a flow.get or a context.get or a global.get, you get the, the reference to the object. So whenever I was making changes to these, even without you know, specifying flow.save, I was actually updating the value in the context. So here what I did is when I do flow.get, I add a slice at the end, which is um, it's a JavaScript command for arrays which basically creates a copy. So, and because I, um, I mean, in slice, you can slice a, uh, um, a part of the array. Let's say you want, you know, like the middle of the array or from, I don't know, item two to five, you can slice that out and then you can put it into a different variable. But if you don't specify anything, then it just returns the whole array. And with this, I could make a copy uh, from uh, well, I could create a copy from whatever is in the context into the message.payload. So when I start modifying the message.payload, I don't um, modify whatever in the context. And then here I return the message. Uh, so there is a return here. So obviously none of these part gets executed where, you know, it updates the icons and everything because that's already updated in the context. And um, that's pretty much it. So this is how I managed to make this work. And as I said, whenever you, <clears throat> whenever I change a file, so we re, re sorry, whenever I change a folder, or I reset, or I do anything else, which um, you know makes, which calls this uh, file node to read the files from the folder, then in this path or in this wire, we send an empty into the filter. So that's, that's the that's the piece which empties the filter every time you change the folder. And um, yeah, that's it. So as I said, it was really easy to implement. Um, so I thought it's going to be more complicated, but, but once I looked at the flow and then I just remembered how the things work, it was, it was easy. Really the only trick here is just to use this uh, slice uh, um, method. Otherwise you will keep overwriting the uh, uh, you know, whatever is in the context. So when you delete your filter, actually, then you don't get all the files back because you have already removed uh, them in a previous step. So, you know, with the slice, I just get a copy and I can just, you know, keep changing it. And that's it. So as I said, this modified flow is going to be in the GitHub and you will find the link in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.